What's up guys, what do you do? It's your boy Christian Guli Kachibombo and welcome to another episode of Creative Corner, a show where we have interviews with young creatives to inspire the world and the youth at large. Joining us today is spokesperson for Swift, Yacintha, and I hope I could pronounce that correctly, and we'll just be covering a couple of topics from toxic masculinity to being a woman in the workplace. Yacintha, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Hello, and thank you for having me, Karabo. You're most welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, just quickly, I think, like, could you just tell us what Swift does and the role that you play in Swift as well? Well, I'm the spokesperson and um, on the board for Sisters Working in Film and Television. Our organization exists to advocate for women's um, equality. We work to change and against gender and race and pay parity. Uh, we're there to empower females in the industry in a very historically male-dominated industry. Um, you know, we, we, we have support systems, um, but for one, you know, our strength is really networking women, providing opportunities, and of course, trying to work in towards a safer set environment for our women. For, your, for our women, definitely. Um, what, what would you say are the most common issues faced by women in the media and entertainment industry, specifically in film, and television. I think the the biggest issue is um, traditionally the industry is being run by males, and so it has been very hard for women to one become producers and directors and storytellers, writers. So that's been closed for a very very long time, and that's actually the control. You know, it's like the con- the nerve center because if you are a producer, a director, you control the set. So one of the, the aims for us and objectives is to empower women to take over that role. Um, the biggest issue is that it's such a closed environment. Um, I think for us, the, the hardest thing is, you know, I've heard women talk about how when they're on set, um, you know, they're not taken seriously. You know, um, there was one director that was talking about her first day on shoot, uh, she wore red lipstick. And it was like every, all the, the crew were looking at her and making comments cat calling um you know there is this idea that we need to become other kinds of human beings when we take on those roles become more masculine so you know we want to like really challenge that idea because why can't we still be feminine but be in control of these um of our sets and our, of our organizations i think the biggest thing on set is that we are seen as not as women not as equal and so we are abused and sexual abuse can come in different ways yeah so it is how you treated how you spoken about how you looked at you know somebody can be looking at you in a way where you are feeling you don't feel good about yourself and that happens every single day yeah i'm pretty sure that that also happens outside of the media and entertainment industry in our everyday lives at a taxi rank or bus stop in the workplace. I, I'll give you an example. I went to the store yesterday. My car wasn't starting, so I took a walk. And there were construction guys. And walking towards, I already felt very insecure because I could feel, you mm-hmm. know. And as I was walking past them, they were making comments and they were looking me straight in the eye. And I just couldn't get away fast enough. And it was so sad because... Here I am advocating for women's rights and for safety of women, yet I felt so insecure okay. and, and I didn't feel safe walking. I can imagine. Um, so one, one, thing, one thing that I've picked up is that um, toxic masculinity and, and, and patriarchy, the patriarchy is a, is a big factor in almost everybody's lives, everybody's daily lives. Could you please just quickly differentiate for us between patriarchy, toxic masculinity and fragile masculinity? Well, I don't know that I know exactly every single term, but I think, (laughs) you know, for me, um, toxic masculinity is something that society has brought upon because there's a certain way that uh, we've seen males and how males should be and how they should react and males shouldn't cry. And so there's been this idea of how a man should be. Mm -hmm. And Based on that, you know, this just been a perpetuation of how men, how masculine men, how strong men are. Mm-hmm. And that's what just carries on from generation to generation. You know, when men can't be seen as vulnerable and uh, compassionate. And, you know, I, I always say that the way you change this is that you take it home. 
You know, if we teach our young boys how to respect women, how to be compassionate, and how to really treat women right with respect, yeah. you know, that that's going to shift the conversation completely. True. I second that too. I second that too. Um, are, are you able to identify signs of toxic masculinity? If so, please name a few. Um, well, like just in society. Oh uh, well, in society, in the media entertainment industry, in the workplace, in general. I think um, toxic masculinity, particularly in our industry, you know, you have this um, when there are men in positions of power, mm-hmm. you know, they sort of like tend to um, include the other males, you know, you kind of exclude it from being around the table and making the decisions. And for me, that is a form of toxic masculinity because you're not allowed to get around the table for whatever reason. They don't see us as equal. They don't see us as important. And uh, one of the, the things that, that is so such a an evident um, an issue, and particularly in Hollywood as well, the pay parity how female leads and male leads are paid completely different. Completely different, true. Yeah, um, that, that's actually a really, really good answer to the, to the question. Um, Swift, Swift champions for equal opportunities for women in a historically male-dominated industry and prioritizes equal opportunity for historically disadvantaged women in a historically white-dominated sector. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but according to a report that I read um, when I did some research, the issue isn't so much on the screen, but more behind the screen, where women believe is a male-dominated department, especially the technical side. How, yeah. how, how correct is that? Well, I think there's an issue in front of the screen as well, because we have a shortage of female led narratives you know Mm -hmm. where you have strong women because there's always been this idea that even with with uh, actresses you know you you have a sell by date right Mm -hmm. so when you're over 40 there are very few roles for you yet men have worked consistently into 60 70 years old i mean look at al pacino uh they are still working consistently Mm -hmm. for women over 40 to have a a, a leading role has always been difficult but you have seen We've seen the shift, you know, the, the, the narratives are being included for strong women. But certainly the issue is behind the scenes. Um, I work as a producer, so I'm the, I have the ability to crew up and find different crew. I mean, that's what the producer does. And I struggle to find females in technical roles, you know, yes. because you have to, obviously, when you're doing a film, you want the best crew, you want the best people. So as much as I want to include women, we haven't had the opportunity. We haven't had the opportunity to do 10 films, you know? So even though that is a, is a barrier, I mean, as a female, I absolutely still include women, but men have just been doing it for so long and they've had the experience and they've had the opportunity. We are seeing a real shift. You've seen really strong editors, strong directors, mm-hmm. um, HODs in production design. You're, you're finding women rising up in, that, in those roles. But they're not as many as as men because of the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and and on screen, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but women are represented as commodities and are um, over sexualized to continue feeding the monster of patriarchy. With black women being the most incorrectly represented, do you think that that normalizes the patriarchy and suppresses women's opinions, views, and voices? Absolutely, but you've seen a real shift, and and women have started to speak up about being um, just sexualized as a female lead. And often, when you read scripts, or I read scripts, or you watch a film, there'll be a female lead, but the storyline is weak. She's portrayed as a weak person, as a woman that is under her husband, or she's either a slut or she's a bad woman. Very seldom do you see female narratives where you are women are making like really doing some amazing things and they're not just sexualized as a woman or as a I mean it's great to be seen as a mother but we also you know we also CEOs we also like breaking the ceiling I mean I think of one of the females that I completely admire is the Prime Minister of New Zealand Jacinda Ardern I mean she's done amazing things she's gone into parliament just after having a baby breastfed in in parliament and has 
led the country that has come out of COVID in a miraculous way. True. I like that. <laughs> uh, now, I'm sure that I'm sure that several women have tried standing up to toxic masculinity in the industry. Um, does that often lead to some sort of backlash, or are they heard and are changes actually made? No, I think in the past there's been a real backlash because one, you're seen as a problem, you're seen as somebody who's going to create drama, mm-hmm. you're seen as somebody possibly who is lying. So there's been a real negative um, negativity around women who speak up. But again, I think because of COVID, as much as we've had an influx of um, GBV, we also have had an influx of women speaking out and women coming together and supporting each other and saying, "This is enough." You know, we because we speak out doesn't mean that we are should be seen as dra- drama people or problematic. And I've heard so many instances where people will straight up say, "Don't deal with that person because she causes drama." And then when you dig deeper, there is a story there. But I do think we have a long way to go there. I do because again, who's in charge of these? Uh, organizations who's in charge of these sets men yeah is there any way that we, that we could possibly change that narration i believe the more you put women in power in positions of power mm. whether it's producers writers directors you then you'll see a shift we have the unique ability to have compassion we have tolerance we are women that women run families you know they multitask but i think out of anything they have a huge amount of compassion and when you have a women in 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 a position of power you know they understand where other women are coming from and i believe that then you will see a shift because they understand what the dynamics are and if you find a woman in that position she's had to go through some crazy stuff to get there you know so surely she has some ex- some experience in that um, regard true now toxic toxic masculinity is obviously something that could um easily get out of hand as you mentioned and from what we've seen over the years do you think that that contributes to gender based violence Absolutely um I think that just really exacerbates the the issue um once we started to shift that uh narrative you know about toxic mas- masculinity and when you start telling men that it's okay you know you can be a man but you don't have to be a horrible man you don't have to be toxic you don't have to be abusive um but again you see that shift happening but you know not many men stand up and speak up you know there might be that type of person that possibly doesn't involve themselves in any kind of gbv but men are not speaking up so it's about standing up and saying i support women i respect women and i think the more you have men coming forward and actually making you know join a line in the sand and saying this is enough these are our women these are our girl children i think you will have a shift i know you will yeah i think there's also very very few men that actually put their friends or colleagues in check about um promoting the patriarchy and 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 um, underestimating women and that somehow contributes to the cycle going on from generation to generation the way that the little boys are raised like you said earlier on they're raised to, to not cry and to not show emotion well i mean i've i've, I've seen men you know um powerful men mm-hmm. who like they they literally protect their brothers you know um even when there has been accusations uh, around their friends they will actually protect and they will stand by their their brothers right yeah. um under all circumstances there is this i don't know what you call it <laughs> you're a guy but i guess for women there is a sisterhood right mm-hmm. so more and more you see sisters women we're not from the same blood but we are sisters and we're yeah. standing together and we're supporting each other so i guess the same uh, um i guess it's the same for men but i feel like we're doing it in a positive way we're not protecting each other in a from bad, from yeah. hiding thing uh we really protecting each other to further ourselves and has the has the government helped swift in any way to remedy the the situation yeah i mean we've had support from the department of arts and culture and sciences and we had the um code of good practice 
mm-hmm. where all our different production companies um, have to sign this code. And that really just says your production, you will make sure that there's no sexual harassment, that you will have a safe set and you will have women protected. Um, what that does from the department's point of view is that for most funded productions, if you don't adhere to that, your funding will go away. So oh. it is a serious um I mean, it's a serious code of conduct. If you're signing, you have to adhere to it. You know, um, as as well, what we do with as Swift is we go and we do workshops around sexual harassment for production companies, uh, where we give them the resources. We take them through, you know, what what are the kinds of sexual harassment. So you educate both women and men on sex, because you know, I think men have become so used to just being. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> saying some inappropriate things and they don't know they don't think it's wrong yeah. right so it's about educating that's not okay so we have a whole PSA campaign that we came up with that's called now that's not okay and we show different circumstances of sexual harassment All right, that, that actually brings me to my next question um, what would you say are swift solutions and programs to prevent toxic masculinity in the media and entertainment industry you just mentioned that's not okay. Yeah, so we have that um, campaign and then we, we do workshops for production companies. Um, and then we are working on a really exciting program. It's a on? safety contact community. You're working on a very exciting A program. really exciting project. It's called the Safety Contact Officer. Okay. And what that would be is um, we're going to pilot that in September. So it's going to be a person that's highly trained in GBV and handling these situations, taking them through processes, and they'll be on set. So when you're on set, whether you crew or cast, and something happens, there is a person, a go-to person on set that you can go and speak to. Because what often happens is, you know, these things happen, you're not sure if it happened, and then days go by, and nothing ever comes of it. So... The idea is to eventually just have this out throughout the country. Every production, television or film will have a contact safety officer. Well, the, and and what, what opportunities has SWIFT and its partners given women in the film and television industry, especially their members? Well, our, you know, we have different resources. We have a members group. We have a... Um, online presence but we also have a private group so if you're part of the SWIFT membership you have access to that and that's a really a wonderful resource platform it's on telegram and if you in the industry people like most women they'll post up i'm looking for a director i'm looking for an editor i've got this project and most of our members work together because of a call people put out calls i mean just yesterday we had a lovely um testimony from a, one of our, our our SWIFT members, um, somebody had put out a note a week ago to, or two weeks ago to say they needed a director for a series. And she contacted the lady in Cape Town. She's based in Joburg. And out of that, she's directing a series. Wow. Yeah. That's really impressive. <laughs> that was amazing. You really excited about that. Yeah. So she, um, you know, she's a young black female director. She's done some stuff. Um, but this is a great opportunity. Now she gets to direct a whole series. Yeah, so those are the kinds of things that we That's do. really, really impressive. And we also have know. great mentorship. Sorry, I just want to add, we have mm-hmm. great mentorship. What we do is we take our more experienced uh, SWIFT members, ones that have produced and have written and directed for you know many, many years, and we take young members and we team them up to mentor. And that's been very successful. Right, that's, that's, that's the membership. Yeah, so you have to be a member. And uh, we did a call for July for Youth Month. And we took, I think we had a call and we had like 40 young people who have either graduated, who has worked in the industry for a short while of time, or around 30. And so we were very specific in what it is they wanted to do. They wanted to write, produce, edit. And then we took our older, um, more experienced, actually, I should say, uh, members, and we teamed them up. And so they've been working for a month together okay. and just helping the young, the youth to understand what it is and how to, to really perfect their craft. All right. That's, that's really, really nice. I really hope that that plans out like you've planned. Um, just quickly, could you please take us through all the platforms that Swift has um, and any line 
that women could get a hold of, uh, women like victims of gender-based violence or anybody who would just like to be a part of the SWIFT team? Well, if you want to join SWIFT, we, our website is sistersworkinginfilmandtelevision.org.za. We have a Facebook uh, page, which is SWIFT, uh, Instagram and Twitter, SWIFT. What I do have to say is that we do not have any kind of legal process around sexual harassment. We yeah. have a wealth of um, resources around that and that you'll find on our website what to do, who to go to, all the different resources available. We are not a legal entity. We are a nonprofit. So our board, um, we all work in the industry. So we give up our time and we work on these different projects uh, like the safety contact officer all of our um, own time and so you know we partner with different people and so if there is a need you know we can um, assist and guide you in the right in the right way but it is such a great resource to belong to an organization particularly in COVID because the opportunities are there but if you're sitting alone and you don't know you don't belong in a community you'll never know Mm -hmm. so I'll urge people belong to a group belong to an organization it's important it's helpful would you, would you say that that's that's a more viable option? Absolutely. I mean, you've seen um, with COVID all the different um, industry organizations. We have IPO, SASFA, WGSA, that's the Writers Guild, even the SAG, the Act- Actors um, Organization. We've all been coming together, working together. The membership drive has gone up, um, but we've also been really engaging with government and organizations around relief funds. Um, SASFED was uh, responsible for doing the Netflix deal where, you know, there's this relief fund. The NFBF just put out one. And that just, that didn't happen because we were all sitting at home. That happened because organizations came together, put together um, a report and a proposal and really had many, many engagements with um, government. But if you want to have a voice, be part of a, 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 an organization. And SWIFT is a great way to start. If you're female in the film industry, that's great. And what is what is the future of SWIFT looking like? What upcoming projects do you have? I think for us, the exciting part is the safety contact officer. Um, that's really, you know, going to shift how women feel on set. And I think that for it in itself will, will have a, a big shift. Um, for women, I think the most important thing is women need to feel safe, particularly when they go to work. You know, um, so if they have a situation at home where they don't feel safe, that's normally the outlet. Most women go to work because they know they feel safe. For us in the film industry, that's not not the solution. So the main pri- priority for us is to make sure women are feeling safe on set, and the safety contact officer is going to help with that. We have ongoing network opportunities, mentoring, just guiding women through the different opportunities available. All right, Jacinta, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for joining us. We are going to add all the links you have mentioned, um, all the websites you have mentioned to the link of the video and everybody will be able to get a hold of you. Um, Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. All right. Thanks, Jacinta. Have a good one. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I'm Tony Rams, and uh, this is the journey through all the singers I've released so far. And the first one is Caroline. Caroline, since you came around, you're all I think about. I am enchanted by you Oh, Caroline Since you came around You've left me so mesmerized I guess I'm falling for you But I'll take my 
time to know you I won't rush to tell you I love you Caroline Caroline I think I'm losing my mind Lovers feelings I will try to hide so I can get to know you better Oh, Caroline Girl, you're so fine, I won't lie But there's nothing I don't want to run So I can get to know you better Oh, Time to know you I won't rush to tell you I love you Caroline Caroline Yeah I'd like to take you out sometime For dinner or for a glass of wine to get to know you better oh oh would you care to be my friend my heart is beating for you i guess i'm falling for you now i know i'm searching for love but i'll take my time to know you i won't rush to tell you I love you My heart is beating for you I guess I'm falling for you now I know I'm searching for love But I'll take my time to know you I won't rush to tell you I love you Thank you so much. That was Caroline. I don't know how I'm feeling super drunk, but I know I'm feeling drunk with you. Never ever been high in my life, but I know I'm feeling high with you. Looking down from the clouds, a bit of good view, sing the world out here yeah, with you. Feel so right, feel so right, feel so right. Some people talk about Mary Jane, but I swear she ain't got nothing on you. You need good things, so good, got me coming back for more. I don't think I'm ever gonna stop. Can't explain, can't explain, I can't fully explain how I'm so in love with you. Feel so right, feel so right, feel so right. And oh, I'm loving the feeling, I'm loving the feeling, the feeling of love. And oh, Nobody can stop me Stop me from feeling Don't feel this way about you Cause you You love me crazy You love me crazy You love me crazy Friends are telling me, were telling me That I've never seen, never seen Since you came around You're some move on your love But your brother got me feeling like Superman, I can fly I don't mind, I don't mind, I'm a sucker for your love, I just can't never get enough Feel so right, feel so right, feel so right Hold me tight, let me treat you right, yeah, come let's spend the night I feel the rush going on my spine and I cannot hold it down I don't wanna waste time, wanna let you know you're mine and I'm never gonna change my mind Gotta know, gotta know, gotta know that you are mine And no Cause you, 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 you
crazy. You drive me 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 crazy. Drunk in love, I don't want this to be over Fill my cup, I don't plan on getting sober I'm so high, got me feeling like a stoner Lost in time Oh, oh I'm in love with the feeling I'm loving the feeling I'm feeling in love And no Nobody can stop me, can stop me from feeling From feeling this way about you cause you You thought of me crazy 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 Oh yeah Damn, that was a feeling.